everyone, Mike here and welcome back to the Sim Racing Den. So this is going to be a quick review, a uh, little bit off the cuff style video. So bear with me as we go through this. But I wanted to give you my uh, impressions. And these are my pretty much my raw first impressions of the Asher Racing B24 LSC. And this is a Simi Cube wireless button plate, wheel button plate. So this is the button plate here. And I've paired this with um, my Fnatic Porsche replica wheel. This is the suede version. Um, I've actually had this wheel rim for a while and I've just sort of been um, looking for a wheel plate to mount this to. I used to use this with a Fnatic wheel, but obviously switching to Simi Cube, um, that wasn't going to work. So I was just kind of looking for some different solutions. I know there's replicas of the actual Porsche uh, steering wheels, but they're a little pricey and I just kind of wanted something straightforward to, to use. Um, I had recently picked up a Sim Racing Bay SRB Ultra, which I'm going to kind of compare that to this later on in the video because I think they're they're very close and the, the Sim Racing Bay BB Ultra being a little bit less money um, could be a really good alternative to the Asher Racing button plate. So we'll talk about that later in the video. So so yeah, I just wanted something really simple to mount this Porsche wheel to. I didn't care to have, you know, too many buttons, but there are, you know, a good amount of controls on here. Um, and also just wanted to try out an Asher Racing product. Um, I know a lot of people like their wheels and, and some people have actually stated that they're, they've seen some differences between the button plates and the wheels. So I can't really do a comparison on that yet, but I'll give you my impressions on what I think of this button plate. So let's just kind of go through the initial features. So like I said, this is directly compatible with the SimiCube 2 Sport Pro Ultimate with wireless out of the box. Um, so there's a, a built-in antenna here on the back um and it's so there's a battery in here that you would have to change out but i think it lasts for several several years uh with normal use you've got an on and off switch here which i've got it on right now and paired to um to my wheelbase so yeah so it's pretty straightforward i, I like you know i do appreciate these simi cube wireless wheels and not having to have a cord hanging you know it's not too much of a big deal i've gotten pretty used to it with the with the grid MBX, mpx wheel which i use quite often actually but there's something to say when you're, you know, you're switching wheels and you just turn it on and it automatically automatically connects. You don't have to worry about plugging anything in. So, you know, they come at a higher price tag, obviously, but um, the added convenience is, is probably certainly worth it if you appreciate that sort of thing. So um, let's go through the buttons. So you've got a total of 24 inputs. And with that, you have eight push buttons. So you've got two at the top here. These two are in a sort of shroud here to protect from automatically hitting them which makes sense to kind of have this maybe to be like pit limiter or something, something you don't want to hit accidentally. Um, and then you have two buttons down here on either side and then the two blue ones. So those are your push buttons. And then you have also um, two seven way uh, funky stick, you know, funky switches or joysticks, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can press down and you can go in all directions here and you can also rotate them as well to kind of get fine tune adjustments. So these are great when you're going through menus or your MFD, um, you can precisely change things that way. Um, so that's pretty much it for, for buttons. Like I said, this doesn't have a lot of inputs, but you know, I think this kind of covers off. I don't really need a lot of controls and for anything else, I'm gonna map those to my button box and I also have a stream deck. So I don't really need personally too much on the wheel outside of just kind of the things that are straightforward. Um, and then on the back, you've got obviously two, two paddle shifters and that's it, right? So pretty straightforward. It's a nice, uh, simple wheel. This is CNC machined and anodized out of automotive aluminum. So it's not plastic. It feels, you know, super high quality. Actually, everything feels really nice. Um, the paddles, everything is metal. I, I can't really find a plastic piece on here other than maybe the buttons and the shrouds around here. Everything else is pretty much metal from what I can see. So yeah, really nice quality um, looking wheel. It doesn't have a ton of weight to it. I would say most of the weight right now that I'm feeling is probably the QR. Um, but when I had it before I installed the QR, it, it's a pretty lightweight wheel, um, but it does, definitely feels very nice and balanced. And that will depend on the wheel rim, obviously, that you install. Um, this Porsche wheel is, is pretty light uh, compared to my other ones. So yeah, so that covers off the ba basics. In the box, you have What's included is you have a sticker pack. So you've got stickers here to um, put around the rotary coder. And then you also have just basic buttons for push and they come in white and black. So like I said, I haven't even used the wheel, so I haven't even decided 
what stickers I want to put on here. And I usually take a while before putting them on. I don't like to commit and, and have to take them off. But uh, for now, we will see which controls make the most sense. So the let's talk about the quick release. So pretty standard um, will fit any quick release with a 70 millimeter pattern. So this is the semi cube um, proprietary QR and no problem connecting that uh, everything fits perfectly. There is not a lot of depth to the the wheel. So depending on your setup, I don't know if you might want to get a spacer. It just depends on uh, on how how your wheel is set up. But for me, not a problem um, mounting it to the semi cube wheelbase. So overall, in terms of design, um, which is kind of one of the categories I like to look at, and you can combine that with build quality as well. Um, design is nice. Like I like, you know, there's nothing really uh, fancy or anything crazy about this wheel. Um, you know, it's pretty standard looking. Some may say it's kind of boring looking if that if you care about these things. But you know, for me, it's it's definitely just functional. And the focus kind of becomes on the wheel rim, which is which I'm fine with. Um, but you know, in terms of accessing controls and everything, it's really easy. Um, build quality feels great. Like everything feels really nicely made. Um, I'll talk a bit about the paddle shifters in a second because there is something I don't um, like about them particularly um, when I compare it to my other wheels. But that that might just be a personal thing, uh, as these things can be really subjective in terms of the feel of uh, different controls and the paddles but as far as the buttons go you know they feel really nice to press they've got a nice kind of quiet clicking sound i don't know if you can hear it on the mic right now hopefully um the ones in the shroud are actually you know it's you're very unlikely to press those by accident because you really have to push your finger in to to get at them so that's really nice and the buttons down here no problem and then yeah no act no problem accessing like reaching the buttons on this size wheel um you know, if you had a bigger wheel rim, the, they might actually be a little bit further away. But uh, at that point, you might want to look at some different um, button plates, if that's the case, if you have a larger wheel rim. So moving the, the seven way joysticks here um, feels OK to me, but they, they kind of get it just doesn't feel as nice as some others. I felt like it just doesn't feel smooth. It's kind of hard to describe, but there's just sort of um, not a great feeling. I would say I've I've felt better ones and it, it's harder to kind of tell where I'm pressing within the joystick, like what direction I'm pressing it in. And maybe I'm not explaining that properly, but they just, they don't feel that great to me. I, I've I felt better ones on, on other wheels, but um, turning them is fine. Like there's enough that you can, there's a little bit of a indent or click as you turn these. So you can kind of know, um, feel that you're adjusting it. But um, yeah, and pretty easy to, to turn. You're not likely to hit them accidentally or, or turn them accidentally. And then, yeah, all the buttons feel pretty good, pretty standard. Not the best, not the worst buttons that I felt on a steering wheel. So really no complaints there. Um, now, as far as the, the design with the paddles, so these are Asher's um, magnetic paddle shifters. So in the box, you do have uh, a couple of sets of magnets and spacers to adjust the overall, uh, I guess, force of the shifters and how those feel. I haven't done any adjustments because I want to get a feel for for how it comes out of the box. Um, but already, like, I'm fine with the with the force. This is actually fine for me. But the noise is a big problem. They seem really loud to me, and I'm just not sure if it's something that I'm missing here. Um, but it just doesn't appear that there's like a some sort of rubber protector between the two metal pieces here, like the shifter. I'm just going to try to show you on camera, like, uh, let's see if it'll focus. So there we go. So in between there, I don't see any um, rubber or damper, like it's just metal on metal. So I'm kind of wondering, like, I kind of at first thought, did they miss something on my wheel? Or is it is it missing it like from from the factory? Um, or is this actually how it's meant to to come? So I'll have to do a little bit more research on that or, and maybe reach out to Asher Racing just so to be sure. Or I may actually reach out to Sim Racing Bay, which is which is the store that I purchased the wheel from. But like they're very loud. I'm sure you can hear this through the microphone right now, um, but it's definitely kind of annoying. Like when you compare it to let me show you the BB Ultra so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about here. So these are the paddles on the BB Ultra. And in between um, the two pieces, like the shifter and the shifter arm, there is a little rubber piece. So it's got a really nice 
click and you can like there's no clanking or metal to metal sound it's actually really satisfying so like right now i'm 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 actually preferring the bb ultra paddles to to the asher racing now these don't have i guess as strong as a force that the asher racing does but like it's it's really minor to me to be honest but just overall the feel and the and the fact that these are much quieter and more satisfying to press um, I'm really leaning towards the BB Ultra being my favorite over this. And I would say that if you were comparing which one to buy at this point, and I know this is early in the review, but just based on the shifter feel and the fact that the BB Ultra is less money, I'm kind of already leaning towards recommending that to someone that has neither of these. So, but let's go through, you know, we'll take it for a drive and see how it feels, but that's kind of already off the bat in terms of comparing them. And, and even like looking at the design of the, the button plate itself like they're very similar and honestly like i think these encoders here look a lot nicer now the only difference though here is these ones down here are not joysticks but you've got joysticks up here as well that turn so you've actually got more inputs on the bb ultra it's less money and the paddles feel better so like already this is is scoring a lot of points for me in terms of comparing these and this is less money and uh, very similar and it's wireless so like i would say sim racing bay in terms of what they've done with the bb ultra and I, and I reviewed this as well which i'll post the the link to the video here if you want to kind of see me drive with this and, and go more in depth and then you can come back and compare the two after you you've watched both reviews but i'm already really leaning towards this as being the go-to and my recommendation for anyone kind of comparing these or looking for you know a basic um semi cube wireless button plate so I don't know what Asher Racing's wheels are like, but I know a lot of people um, really do enjoy them. So maybe there's some differences there in terms of how the paddles feel, but I'm, I'm not really sure, obviously not having owned or tested one. So anyways, so that's pretty much it from the design build quality. So let's just talk about the price here quickly uh, as we're sort of on and talking about comparing the two. Um, the B24 LSC, uh, you can order it through Sim Racing Bay, which is where I order uh, ordered both this and the BB Ultra from, um, just because of the pricing and, and the shipping and everything through them was was pretty good. Um, it's 449 euros. If you want to order it with a pre-installed um, Simi Cube QR, then you're looking at 504 euros, so 50 euros more for the the QR. But if you want to, maybe you can purchase the QR locally, which I actually did with this wheel. I have a local hobby shop, uh, Simulation One Systems, who here in Toronto or in Markham, I should say, um, I was able to buy the, the QR through them, save some money there in terms of the shipping, and then ordered this through through Sim Racing Bay. So, and then the price of the BB Ultra, so let me just give you a comparison here. And actually, they're, they're, it's showing like 7% off right now at Sim Racing Bay. So without a QR, it's 399 euros. So it's already a uh, $50 difference. Um, if you want to put the the QR on, then it's obviously another 50 euros, but really good price. Like the, the BB Ultra, I think is a, a fantastic button plate. It's a it's a real, really nice option and, and it's wireless and you've got, you know, more inputs than the B24 and what I think are better feeling paddles and are quieter as well. So, and design wise, they kind of look the same. I kind of like the color scheme personally on the BB Ultra because it's just blue and red. You just have a couple different colors here, but these are really minor, like nitpicky things at that point. And, and some people might not care. So um, yeah, let's go for a you know quick drive test and I'll give you some of my impressions on, you know, just kind of how the wheel feels to use and drive and, and shifting through the gears um, through different corners. Okay, so we're here in the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4, one of my favorite cars to drive in iRacing. I typically drive the Porsche 992 GT3 and then switch it up with the, the Cayman GT4, obviously slower than a 911 GT3, but uh, equally as fun to drive. And I find that uh, the races in the GT4 class can be actually a lot of fun. So we'll, we've started up the engine. Let's just kind of take it out here and see how the wheel feels. So I don't know if you can already hear these paddle shifters, but I don't know how they're coming through on the mic till I take a look at this audio in post, but you know, it's just like I said, like, I know I'm kind of harping on this a lot, but it's just, it's very loud compared to other shifters. I just feel like after 
a long race that it would start to get kind of annoying to me. Um, some people might like that loud sound. If you appreciate like the loud kind of clicking noise of a sequential shifter, um, maybe you enjoy it, then this, you may be fine with it. But for me, it's just too loud. And when I compare it to the BB Ultra shifters, which just feel really nice and are, you know, extremely quiet, um, I have some issues with it. So now the feel of the wheel, like these button plates, as you switch through, you know, from one to the other, I don't feel a huge difference of how it affects the handling. Obviously, if the button plate is very heavy or, or very light, then that may alter the feel, but it obviously has a lot to do with the wheel rim that you're gonna pair with these standalone button plates. It's gonna change how you feel, like the, the feeling of the wheel, the shape, uh, the size of it. Um, the size has a huge, um, not a huge impact, but can make a significant impact on how forces are replicated through the wheel as well. Um, so if you have a smaller formula wheel versus a GT style wheel like this, you know, things are gonna feel a little bit different, but the button plate itself, I don't think, I'm not feeling much difference from this compared to, let's say, uh, the, the BB Ultra, even my Turn Racing BB2, which is probably a lot lighter than these than these metal uh, button plates, being that the the, B, the Turn Racing BB2 is all plastic. Uh, it definitely feels lighter in my hands, but, so yeah, in terms of the location of the buttons, everything feels fine in terms of driving and being able to reach them. I don't feel like I have to take my hands too far off. Um, the distance of the paddles right now is fine for me, but you can adjust them as well um, to kind of suit where you um, are comfortable in terms of reaching them. So just ignore my driving right now because I'm, I'm terrible at talking and paying attention at the same time, especially when I'm just kind of going off the cuff like this, but um, not focusing really on the road. I'm looking at the wheel and, and figuring out what I want to say as we go. But um, yeah, I mean, like I have no issues with how this feels to drive. It's just for me, the, the biggest thing is the paddles when you compare it to the BB Ultra, which is pretty quiet. I mean, if you're racing somewhere where, you know, sim racing needs to be relatively quiet, whether someone's sleeping in the other room, your spouse, a baby, your child, um, I think these might be an issue. Even if you know, you've got headphones on, you're keeping everything quiet, but these are gonna be pretty loud in your room. Like, and I'm not really slamming on them. Like if I was to, here, let me get to a straighter, section of the track and I'll just, I'll really slam on them without being conscious of what I'm doing. So that's, you know, putting not like too much force, but not really thinking about how much force I'm putting into it. I kind of feel like as I'm driving, I'm kind of trying not to hit them hard because I just don't want to hear the sound. So it, you know, it, it is kind of becoming distracting to me. And I know I'm harping on this a lot, but you know, when it comes to a button plate, I think the buttons, you know, unless they're, you know, really bad feeling, that's going to be an issue. Um, but I think most people are focused on the paddle shifters because, you know, that's something you're interacting with, you know, throughout the, throughout your race, you know, buttons and things like that. You may make some adjustments as you go, um, in terms of different car settings and, and putting your pit limiter on, but, um, or using the radio or something. I don't know. Right. I don't interact with my buttons too much. Um, as I'm not changing too many things throughout the race, but the paddles, you're, you're just constantly using those throughout the whole race. It's the, the most important thing. So if the paddles don't feel right to you, it can affect the overall, the whole experience of the wheel. And for me, it's just so distracting enough that, you know, I, I'm probably not going to use this wheel very often. It might be something that I just end up selling, um, to someone who's fine with it, um, and, and try something else out. So because I just feel like between this and the BB Ultra, I'm gonna wanna use that. So I kinda almost wish I had just picked up two BB Ultras because I do want each wheel to have its own button plate. I'm not, I don't wanna be switching wheel rims, it's just gonna take too long. So I almost feel like I just picked up two of those or or gotten a different one. I'm, I'm not too thrilled with the Asher Racing. Like, it's hard, right? Because it's, it's a really nice product, it's well made, the buttons feel good, the price is not terrible for what it is. Um, but the paddles for me right now, that sound just ruins the whole experience. The paddle feel is really nice. Like the actuation is great, but I mean, if, like, if you have headphones on, you're probably not going to hear it as much. Um, but I don't always use headphones. Sometimes I just don't want to wear headphones and I just use my speakers. Um, I can probably, and I have the speakers set pretty low right now. 
So you might be thinking like, okay, the sound is not a big deal. I use headphones all the time, right? So do I, I use headphones probably more often than my speakers, but I do like to use uh, my speakers once in a while just to kind of jump in and do a quick race. And if, if no one's home and no one cares about me pumping the volume on the speakers, I almost prefer that to headphones just cause headphones can get kind of sweaty and uncomfortable sometimes. So yeah, if you have headphones on, like I, I tested that um, off camera already, but I feel like you can still kind of hear it. Um, so yeah, the noise thing, I don't know. It's just for me, I know I'm being crazy about it, but these things kind of bug me. And if you're, you're kind of OCD like me and you know, you spend money on stuff and, and if something's going to annoy you, it's going to kind of ruin the experience. But you know, I think it's a great button plate. I would still recommend it. Um, but I would say if you are deciding between this and the, um, the BB ultra, I would definitely go with the BB ultra because like the price is lower has all the same functionalities. It actually has two extra rotary encoders and the paddles feel really good and they, they're not loud. So I'm curious to know, I don't, I've never owned an Asher racing wheel, like the whole wheel together, like um, one of their just sort of formula wheels where everything, there's no separate wheel rim. Um, I'd be curious to know what the paddles are like on those, if they're any different. I don't know if they're a different um, type. Um, if you have an Asher racing wheel, let me know what maybe your experiences with those paddles. Um, do, do you find the same noise that I'm experiencing now or are you fine with it? Thanks for watching this review. If you found this useful in any way, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up as it helps recommend my content to other sim racing enthusiasts. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, now is a great time to do so by clicking the subscribe button down below.